We have the lovely Lindsay L on Pure Country joining us for a very special day, the Let's Talk Day. I could not think of a better person to join me today to talk about just the importance of our mental health and, you know, focusing on ways to make that the most important thing to us. You are that person that we have today joining us. Shannon, thank you so much. It's always such a pleasure to see your face and also talk to some talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. I am I love Bella's Talk Day. I think it's such an incredible thing that you know anytime we can shed light on mental health awareness, um, I just think it's so healthy. And you know, even when I was growing up, I don't think there was the same importance around it than than it has now so i just think it's a wonderful thing to always keep top of mind and talk about and normalize i was talking to dallas smith about this and i feel like most of us in that generation grew up this way did you grow up with you know people would say i'm depressed all the time and you know i've you know i'm feeling anxious but it just is what it is it is what it is we never really talked about why we feel anxious or why we're feeling down or solutions to help with that as a kid. I just thought it was very normal to just feel that way and just, you know, just get over it. Yeah. I think that, um, if anything, when, when I was growing up, it was like, okay, well, if you feel depressed, you should almost feel guilty about that because you're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to be happy and everything's supposed to be fine. And you're supposed to be this like perfect model of, of what a positive life should look like. And, and I just don't think that that is how any of us should have to live our life or have to focus on um, how we feel. You know, anytime we suppress our feelings, we're just not dealing with, with the meat of it. You know, we're just sort of like putting on this surface layer. And then eventually that meat is going to come out. You know, the, the feelings of everything that we've, you know, stuffed in cardboard boxes and put in our basements is going to come out one day. And so I just think it's so healthy to be able to be like, let's talk about what we're feeling, like actually feeling, not just pretending like everything's okay. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, I was dubbed smiley. That was my nickname. Mm -hmm. And when I hit my twenties and started feeling down a lot, I felt so guilty for not being smiley all the time. I felt like I was letting all those people down that thought that I was this happy kid all the time. And that I had to just like push all those feelings down and be happy. And I feel like for you, you know, you have an outlet in your writing and stuff to kind of go through those things, but you also have to get up on stage and perform. And there's probably days where that might be the last thing that you feel like doing. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And if anything, um, I think in, in any of our careers, you know, obviously being on stage, I definitely need to put it on a smiley face, but in all of our jobs, you know, we're, we're taught just to suck it up and go to work and carry on with our day. And it's just, it's such a dangerous cycle to get into because then that's the patterns that you're used to, leaning into and and performing. And so it becomes this like feedback loop that you're just, you're, you're on autopilot and being like, Oh, I can actually feel the way that I do because I need to always look like I'm ready to go to work, you know, whether that's playing in front of thousands of people or going to sit at a a desk and be an example to all your coworkers. Um, So I think that it's just important to be able to get used to being vulnerable And, you know, and knowing that it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. If anything, those things fuel so much positivity and so much goodness in your life. If you can actually come to terms with them and, and face them. What was the moment for you? I know it's not like a light bulb moment that happens, but do you remember the time or something that encouraged you to go, okay, I have to put my mental health first and you know, either go talk to somebody or call a friend and, you know, talk to them about it, but just open up about the way I'm feeling. Yeah. You know, I, I came out with my story as being a survivor, um, on my last record heart theory. And I think that, you know, dealing with that when I was 13 years old, I had no idea how to deal with that situation, those emotions, all of the baggage that comes with that, let alone going into my twenties, not telling a soul, not even telling my parents until years later. And so I was just carrying all of this grief and shame. And, and it wasn't until, um, 
you know, I started going to therapy. I think the, one of those moments was um, I, you know, heard somebody talk about therapy on a podcast and I started going to therapy and then I, I got really into it and um, went to, you know, a, a wellness camp. And it sort of was the thing that like broke me open. And, um, and I guess growing up, you know, I always thought that, oh, well, therapy is when things are really bad. Like you go to therapy if things are like really hitting the fan and that's when you're like, oh gosh, I'm going to therapy. But it's again, it's just like, I think therapy is one of the healthiest things that you can do, even when you're perfectly healthy and perfectly happy, if that is everything um, yeah. in, in your <laughs> life, I think therapy is one of the most healing things that you can do. Sometimes my best sessions are when everything is fine. You know, everything is fine. That's when I can do the most work because you don't have to deal with all of the chaos up here. You actually get to do like the deep, deep work on yourself. And so I think that, um, you know, it was that that moment from that moment on when I was willing to be like, okay, I, I do have some things that I would love to uncover and, and, and figure out how to how to sit with this and, and how to deal with it and how to own it. And then just like a lifelong commitment to being wanting to stay true to yourself and wanting to always like learn and uncover that next layer. And so you released, it was July, 2020 that you came up with your story and you released your song, make you on global forgiveness day, which I think is that's there's so many days out of the year. Bella's talk day is one of them that are just such good reminders for us. I think that's the, the problem that I focus on my mental health in January. I'm like, I'm going to start the year off. I'm going to put it first. And then by the time May rolls around, I'm feeling overwhelmed and frustrated. And I'm like, why am I not focusing on this all year long? But you have your song, Make You Out. And I feel like that song, you know, you probably get reached out to by people that are listening to it and you know, seeing themselves or understanding, you know, who you are through the music and being able to relate to that. Is that song kind of a reminder for you every time you hear a story from a fan that you have to also put your mental health first all the time? Cause it probably happens to you too. For sure. Yeah. Shannon, it was so amazing and so healing to be able to release make you and get thousands of messages from fans being like, Lindsay, thank you for sharing your story, you've inspired me to go share my story or reach out to a friend or go to therapy or go find help. And I, I think it's just such a healing process as we become more vulnerable with ourselves and share that with other people. It's just contagious, you know? And so hopefully we can inspire each other, but yes, I constantly get re-inspired. Um, you know, my favorite lyric and make you is the things that bend and stain and break you. That's, what's going to make you. Cause it's those things in life that really like knock at our, our door of, of everything is perfectly fine that really make us who we are. And so, um, I know I have been so healed by, by even just listening to other people's stories and, and watching them be strong and vulnerable in the same moments. And it's so beautiful. And that encourages me to, you know, go deeper within myself. What were some things over the pandemic? Cause obviously this has opened up a whole nother can of worms. I feel like our mental health is more of a priority than ever right now. And, you know, for a lot of us, we didn't have those regular outlets of distraction going out and, you know, playing shows or for me going on stage and hosting or doing interviews or people going to work and socializing. Have you found maybe new ways of coping or helping yourself when you are feeling those ways during this pandemic? Yes, I think that is an amazing thing to bring up. I think that during this pandemic, all of us, as we've been maybe not going out as much and maybe staying in, in our houses more, we've gotten to really take a good look in the mirror of what's going on in our lives, what's the forefront problems that we may have been procrastinating and pushing to the side. And, and um, we can't ignore those things anymore because they're right here. They're right in front of our face. And so um, I think that awareness for all of those things is a beautiful gift because awareness then gives us choice to decide what we want to do with it. And, um, you know, a few of the things that I have I've really clung to from the beginning of the pandemic is, is simple things like journaling, like meditating, like creating space, giving yourself even two minutes in, in your morning to just kind of 
check in how you're feeling, how you're doing. Journaling is such a beautiful um, habit to get into. And I, I say habit because it only works the magical way it does is if you do it often, you right. know, and it doesn't need to be long. It can be okay, I'm going to journal for five minutes. I'm going to journal for 10 minutes. And then some days you'll journal for 30 minutes or some days you'll have two minutes. But having that self-reflection little check-in points is um, is so helpful because a lot of the time we'll tell ourselves we're doing fine. I do it all the time. I do it every single day. I'm, I'm fine. I got morning. this. I got this. I got this. <laughs> and like, there's usually some stuff that we got to figure out that, that, you know, we've been ignoring. And when we're ignorant to our own selves, then that starts to reflect to every other part of our life. For sure. Well, I would love if you would send me some tips on journaling, because I literally have a journal in my desk right here that I have like probably six different entries within six months apart that I've like, I'm trying Girl, here I go, but it that's just okay. never, never, you know, sticks. I'm, I'm going to applaud you right now. And I will say the first step is give yourself grace, okay. give yourself grace. It, there's no right or wrong rule on how to do it. If you have six journal entries in the past six months, then kudos to you. You are going to be able nothing. to look back <laughs> on those six journal entries and be like, wow, that's what I was feeling at that time in my life. And so, um, so that's amazing. If anything, just remind yourself of like being proud of you for doing six journal entries and maybe it will encourage you to do another one, you know, maybe, maybe start once a week, you know, it doesn't need to be every day, but just having that constant reminder will always like cause you to check in, you for know, sure. regardless of which way that that shows up. Thank you so much for joining us on Bella. It's talk day, Miss Lindsay L. But last thing I have to ask, because I feel like this may bring us all some joy in 2022. Is Lindsay L going to be releasing new music in 2022? Yes. Yay. So much. So Shannon, I have a brand new single coming out in a few weeks, which I'm so excited about. I cannot wait for you guys to hear it as well as um, I'm going up to shoot the next episode of Canada's Got Talent. We've been shooting over the past few months and I'm just about to leave for the airport to go shoot that. That starts in March. And so, um, you know, Howie Mandel and Lily Singh and Trish Stratus and Cardinal Official, we've all been working on Canada's Got Talent together. I love all of them so much. So um, it's going to be a really incredible 2022. And I, I cannot wait to, you know, come back and see all of you soon. Uh, well, we love you so much on Pure Country, and we can't wait to finally see you play a show, hopefully soon oh, in 2022. Just fingers crossed. I cannot wait. <laughs> fingers crossed. Cannot wait for that. It's going to happen. You know, we're opening up for Shania Twain at Boots and Hearts. You should all no come. No big deal. Um, ah, what is happening? Um, it's going to be a great year. I cannot wait to see you and hug you in person. Uh, me too. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, girl. Appreciate it. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon.